Well, I started hunting down in Oxfordshire, where I grew up, um, when I was just three years old. I was taken out on the leading rein by an aunt of mine, and um, I've hunted every year since. When I left uh, college, I, I started farming, and uh, after about seven years of that, I decided, literally decided to turn my hobby into my, my work and went into hunt service. And the first morning that I opened the door and went out with a pack of hounds on exercise, I knew I'd done absolutely the right thing. It was the most wonderful feeling to walk down that road with 30 couple of hounds that had never seen you before. And they came with me and it was just marvellous. And I've never regretted a minute of it. Every day of the year is, is uh, pretty much the same. It's a 365 day a year job looking after a pack of hounds. Um, we start at half past six in the morning, apart from on a Sunday when we start at half seven. The first thing we do is wash the hound yards off and then we'll take the hounds out for a walk. At this time of year, because we're hunting, we just take them for a short walk on non-hunting days. We'll go and play with them in the fields for about half an hour, 40 minutes, just let them relax and unwind. And then when we bring them back from that, we'll feed them. Um, and they're always fed on raw flesh. Um, from the casualty livestock that we pick up. And um, we literally spend pretty much the rest of the day picking up casualty livestock, bringing it back, skinning it, dressing it out and putting it ready for when we want to feed it for the hounds. And for, for literally centuries now, the hunts have picked up their casualty livestock for them. We pick up calves, adult cattle, sheep, horses, and it goes to feed the hounds, but we, we pick up far more than we actually need. We're anywhere between 50 to 100 horses, and God knows how many sheep they just pour in. If you take us away, what, what are the farmers going to do with it? They're not allowed to bury it. For those that do have livestock, it is an absolute disgrace. What, what do we do? That we can't bury them, we can't burn them. What do we do with them? You know, it costs us money to remove stuff. So the kennel, come along, take it away, feeds the hounds, everybody's happy. The hunts form about 70% of the, the companies, as you might say, that take away casualty livestock. Take us away, the farmers lose that service. I've brought through six calf carcasses for them, and as you can see, they're all feeding, and this is what we do either after when we've exercised them or after a day's hunting. And we treat them, they are a pack animal, so we treat them as a pack animal. They all feed together and every so often we'll fast them for a day because if they were a pack animal in the wild, they'd make a kill, gorge themselves and then they wouldn't hunt again until they were hungry. It'll take them no more than 10 minutes to eat these calves and they've got such powerful jaws that if I left them any longer they would break up all the bones and, and six calves would end up what you cleared off the yard, wouldn't even fill a bucket. And it, what I'd like to emphasise is that it just shows the strength of jaws that these hounds have got. So that when they catch a fox, they don't mess about it. They're so powerful that they, they kill it just like that. And today we're having what we call a hunt breakfast. Um, partly it raises money for the hunt, but it brings us all together again and generates a bit of trade for one of our public houses as well and um, when we've had the breakfast we'll all go off hunting. Right, right through the year, summer and winter, we socialise together as a group, um, from hunt balls down to just quizzes in, in pubs and inns or, or village halls. Uh, subscribers, mounted followers, there will be between 50 and 60 on the hunt. We've got people from postmen, firemen, policemen, uh, nurses, all sorts of walks of life that come and hunt with us. It's, it's not an elite sport. 
foot followers that follow in cars or on foot or on bikes, hundreds, literally hundreds. If you look around now and see all the, 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 the young people and the horses, it's, it's a family event. It's a time to get together out in the countryside in the fresh air and enjoy a ride out. We're all one, like one big family, really. And that's what it's all about, socialising. And then, you know, everybody, all them lads are packed in now, a lot of big farmers and that, they're going back to work now and milking cows and they'll be working late at 9 o'clock tonight, you know. And most of the lads here aren't farmers, they just like to go and enjoy it. I mean, you never saw any, like, snobs, did you? Or, hey, hello there, and all that bullshit, <laughs> you know. They do oh, that's what they think it is, and it isn't. It's a way of life. With the band going through, the way it'll affect us all is that it's, it's literally taking away a way of life to so many people. I mean, for me, it's my job. But a lot of people, they hunt because, A, because they enjoy it, but B, the camaraderie within the hunt of meeting up with people. There's a lot of people who are retired that live from the end of one season to the start of the next, just waiting for us to start hunting again. And they come and follow us in the car. And you'll see today there's a lot of children come out and they just love to mix with the other children, whether they're on foot or on horseback. And it brings us all together. And with the other functions that we've already mentioned that we do in the pubs and the village halls, um, it's just a reg regular gathering of everybody together and it gives us something to do in the countryside and they're just going to destroy all that. When we had foot and mouth just two years ago and the government was strugg struggling to find enough people to do the cull of the sheep and cattle and the pigs they called upon the hunts and hunt staff willingly went and did what was a particularly stressful job for as long as the government wanted them and now in repayment they're going to kick us right in the teeth and ban us and it, it just makes you very very angry that they can use you like that and then just turn around and spit on you. The fox control would be appalling, absolutely appalling. Uh, we can't cope without the hunt coming to you know, keep everything under control. It's the most safe and humane way of keeping it under control. I don't think there should be a ban. No, I think hunting, hunting is a perfectly acceptable way of controlling the fox population and it's very much better than the alternatives uh, which, which exist in other parts of the country. Well, the other alternatives are obviously the shotgun and, and the snare or trap, which, which often shot foxes crawl away and die a very unpleasant death. Um, and snared foxes can be in snares for several days and, and, uh, and obviously not found. People in towns and villages will know when fox hunting has been banned because your foxes will be in dustbins, they will be absolutely everywhere. You won't have your pet chickens anymore and you won't have your, probably your cat because they will be everywhere. It will be an absolute nightmare. As far as we know, it will become law about mid-February. So up until then, we're going to put in every day's hunting we possibly can. From February onwards, we'll have to be guided by the Master of Foxhound Association and the Countryside Alliance as to how we go on from them. But I suspect we will do a certain amount of hunting after that becomes a law, unlawful. Oh, we, we will keep on hunting if at all possible, yes. Time I remember following her with hounds was in 1938. Uh, reckon about how long that. Henry, 1938. About November time, I can remember as if it was yesterday, and that was my first memory of hunting with these. And I've hunted with them ever since. And I'll, I'm, I might be going for longer than folks think yet. If the bunny will still hunt, because we aren't hurting any.